All right, boys. Come on, let's start the day. Starting to warm up slowly, I think. Should be ready for some breakfast. Huh? Best part of the day? Other than supper? Okay. Okay. Anyone else hungry in here? Huh? It's hungry? You're gonna, you're gonna be bummed. Yeah. Right away. You I know, know right? I know. Every night when I read, my book goes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes down. And then it goes. See, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want it on his belly. Are we ordering pizza or something? We are. Yeah? <laughs> we are. Introducing the vlog to, well, you guys know, Grandpa and Nana. Hello. Hey, Nana, do you like green peppers on pizza? She does not. Yeah, I can pick it off, though. No, she gives me, no, she gives me it just, oh, okay, that makes sense. No, 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 it's all good. So who's the lucky winner of our business today? I think Rocco's in yeah. town. Because they rob you, but they don't rob you blind like some of the pizza places. I like that name. <laughs> Diesel, what do you think? What do you think? I see a little tail wag back there. Want some pizza? This pizza would be a great idea. Seeing you pregnant. Right? No, it's exciting is what it is. I love it. I've been excited about this for a while already. Oh, you think? Big time. It's been a while since you've had a grandkid. Yep. It's been a little while, yeah. Yeah. For those of you who uh, who don't know, this is Britt's dad and stepmom. Hi there. Jerry and Cynthia. And that's pretty. That's me. <laughs> if you don't know who this is. I am the wife. You're the birth and vessel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the housing for the little guy. Pizza has arrived. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, yeah. And Britt got herself a, a veggie pizza. Mm -hmm. Other people can partake in the veggie Oh, you're going to share? I'll share. <laughs> wow. I don't have enough room left in my stomach for a full pizza. Wow. Yeah. yeah, where are you going to put it? No, I think there's at least that much room, so at least <laughs> a piece or two, maybe. Chew it really well. All right, let's get some plates out. It's only twenty bucks, and you can get them in plain colors. Oh yeah. Send me a picture of what they're called. So what you looking at? Yeah. Organizers those... over the door. Oh, okay. Thank you, darling. You go enjoy. Not sure if I can stomach it all, but I'm gonna do my darndest. Let's see if I can get you one of these tables freed up here. Thank goodness for those Kizix. They have served me well so far on the non slushy days. Kizix, that's what it was. Yeah. Did they make men's? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. are they? Uh, they're in the shoe thingy there. They're the light gray ones. Slip on shoe? No, light gray. The back doesn't break down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's those fancy okay. ones. They're amazing. They just slip right on. They're so cozy. And Where'd no you get them on Amazon? No, just on their website, Kizzix. Yeah. They're See pricey. you guys. They're pricey, but you do get points. So yeah. you can add up points and put them towards shoes. Next time they see us, they're going to be grandparents. Yep. Again. Again. <laughs> yeah, they're already grandparents. But grandparents again. Yes. Yep. All right. Very All right, guys. Drive safe. Okay. Give my fur brothers some love for me yep, yep. here. Uh, so top should be up. Oh, yeah, there you go. It was the water that was left. Uh -huh. Say bye, Chevy. Bye. Bye. We love you guys. Okay, love you. Bye. See you later, See guys. Ya.
Careful for the ice. You, Friday. Yep. We'll be there. I won't be bright eyed and bushy tailed, but I'll be there. Okay, you'll be there. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Like I was saying, that's Britt's dad and stepmom. Last visit before baby arrives. Five more days. Five more days. Five more days. You keep popping more and more. Oh, my stomach. I looked at it in the mirror this morning. It's like shiny. It's just stretched to the max at this point. Can't get any bigger. Little baby in there. Little bitty baby. Whew. Actually, I guess he's not that itty bitty. He's he's pretty average size. He's in the 50th percentile. So. Ready for him to be out though, eh? Oh, I was ready a couple weeks ago, but now I'm really ready. <laughs> Oh, are you sad? Don't be sad. Well, Chevy, just us at home again. It's exciting having visitors, right? In this small space, it's, uh, we're gonna have about two at a time. <laughs> then it starts getting really full. Diesel, where'd they go? You weren't ready? Did you say bye? I forgot to say bye, man. Oh, no. Did they get us something? They got us lots of somethings. You saw the Oscar the Grouch toy already. Oh my. Everybody is very interested. Nana is a very good shopper, you see. Bathing suit. Nice. Chevy. Some burping claws. Nice. Never have too many of those. Just in case a Chevy needs to burp. That's right. Burping Chevy. A puppy dog outfit. Oh, and there's pants too. Some very sporty sweats. Nice. For his track and field days. That's right. We already have this, but in a different size. Oh, nice. It's my favorite pattern. It's from Old Navy. Nice. I bought everything in this pattern in at least one size. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I love caterpillars. Well, with smiley faces. This one makes perfect sense. Bananas for Nana. <laughs> and just some plain onesies. That's all? That's, That's awesome. Oh, quite a that, bit. That uh, connector thing. I don't know if you showed the vlog that. Oh, I didn't. Cool. Where is that? Is that in I the nursery? sitting on his crib mattress. Yeah. Let's go see. Multi-use stroller hook. So you can just hook that right onto the stroller. Hook all your grocery bags or something onto it. Good to go. So many neat little inventions and things that have been manufactured already to make life easier. I always say we live in a day and age where anything's possible. If you can think of an invention inside your head, chances are someone's already invented it, patented it, and manufactured it in China. And you can buy it on Amazon. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Is that everybody? Who are we missing? Wiener, hurry up. Come on. Come on. T -t -t Today, Junior. Come on. Did you forget what we do outside? Yeah. I don't know what, what, I was just having a nap, and then all of a sudden I was out here. What did I do? Where's mommy? Oh, that felt good. <laughs> Where's the weasel? There's the weasel. Get him! Get him! Where'd he go, Chef? Where'd he go? Get him! Who's this little guy? 
Hmm? Who's this little guy? Look at that, eh? Prairie sunset. Now to us out here on the prairies, it isn't really that special. But I can understand for those of you who live in the mountains or in more hilly areas other than on the floodplain here in the Red River Pembina Valley, It might be something a little more special for you. It's almost like watching the sunset over the ocean, right? Everything is so flat. Growing up here just seems like another, another evening, right? I just took a drive. Uh, gotta go to the shop, pick up a few things and brought the camera with me and I was like, you know what, I gotta capture this. As a truck driver, I go through all kinds of terrain, right? I go out to the Rocky Mountains, I've been through the Appalachian Mountains, I've been through, you know, the hills of Quebec, out to Newf Newfoundland and up to Yukon Territory. Haven't quite made it into Alaska. I'd love to go there one day, but you know, every place you go is so different. And then you come back home and you sort of have a new appreciation for what you know, you, you once thought was completely boring and dull, and which honestly most people probably still do think Manitoba is boring and dull. I love this place. Now, I was born here, I've lived my whole life here. And taking a little bit of a break from the truck like I am right now, I just get to sort of pause and just take in everything around me. You don't really appreciate what you have all the time, and I'm, I'm just as guilty. You know, I am really glad to live where I live. It's quiet, it's peaceful, it's safe. It's a good place to raise a family, and to raise a kid. Yeah, it gets cold. Minus 50, minus 60 doesn't feel so good, but we don't have earthquakes. We don't have many tornadoes, a few, but we're at sort of like the top end of Tornado Valley, or whatever they call it, Tornado Alley. It sort of extends up here. We, we have a few, but not too much. We, we don't have hurricanes, we don't have tsunamis and for the most part we don't have a lot of crime sure some people think of manitoba and they think of winnipeg winnipeg's got a little bit of a higher crime rate compared to some areas of canada but when you compare winnipeg to anywhere else on the planet it's like an oasis a paradise like compared to uh, obviously the the go-to comparison would be like chicago or uh maybe san antonio texas or uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. I, I met a couple of guys, you're probably watching right now. I met you guys in Waterloo. They're from Trinidad and Tobago. And they came here and they were sort of telling me about uh, the lifestyle back where they were from in their home country and sort of the fear people live in there. You know, they said when they came here to Canada and North America, they were amazed that people just built their houses out in the open. And you know, anybody can just walk up to your front door. And we're just, we think that's normal. He says back where they're from, they have to build big fences with barbed wire around their houses because no matter where you build your house, if you're not on one of these like fancy resorts that have all this security and everything, but in the, in the actual countryside, if you don't protect your house with bars on the windows, barbed wire around your place, people just walk in. They'll just be walking past, be like, hey, what do they got in there? And they'll just like break in and take your TV or take whatever you have in your house and leave. He says, and it's so common that people have to build that around their houses. And when they first got here into Canada and they saw everybody just, you know, had their houses built out on the street, nothing between them. Some people have front fences, but most people, we just have backyard fences, right? We, you see your neighbors outside, you smile and wave, or maybe you just ignore them. But either way, for the most part, we're not worried about people just walking into our house. We still lock our doors, 
absolutely, and there still is crime, nothing's perfect, but compared to a lot of parts of the world on this planet, we live in a great, great place. And sometimes when I'm working and working and traveling all over the place and trucking and trucking, you sort of forget what you have. And now I sort of have the opportunity just to, you know, come onto one of these back roads in Steinbeck here and just enjoy what we have. The last little sliver of sunlight's about to go down below the horizon. The last little bit always sets so fast. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just thinking way too deep right now. Maybe I've had too much time off work already. I will disagree with you on that one. It is nice to just sit back, relax, and think. Let your mind wander and be thankful. You don't need Thanksgiving to be thankful. I'm thankful for what our ancestors did before us to give us everything we have today. And me becoming a father in the next five days. I want to make sure that I carry that on as well and leave the world around me a better place for my child and for one day my grandchildren. Because what I'm building here today is not just for me, it's for them. Just like the world I'm living in right now is for me, that was built by my grandparents before me. My great-grandparents, my great-great-great-grandparents. They put all of this in motion and it's my job to keep that motion going, making things better for the next generation. What a world we live in. Let's go to the shop. Been sitting here pondering life for way too long. So I just quickly stopped by the shop here just to pick up a few things and uh, feel so empty in here without Old Blue, doesn't it? It shouldn't be long, it should be just a couple of days. I did tell him that there's no rush because I'm home for a little while, but at the same time, I want to get him back here as quickly as I can. It feels, feels lonely in here. I guess tomorrow I can come and clean the floor again. Remember we cleaned the floor in here not too long ago? It's time to do it again. So I just got a message from Britt back at home. Let me put you down here. She was saying that Diesel has been very anxious since I left. I think they're getting used to me being there all the time quite quickly. Might be tough for them once they get back on the highway again. So I'm gonna go home and uh, it's kind of late already. It's already like 8.30. I can come here tomorrow. We have most of the day tomorrow that I can be here. There's always something to do. There's always some kind of work to get done here. Always. But I'm also needed at home. So let's go back. So the last couple of nights, Britt has started doing something that she's never done before. She started snoring very loudly. She's never done that before. <laughs> and the first couple of nights, I, I was just happy to hear that she was getting some sleep. She's having trouble sleeping and I didn't want to wake her up. And I was like, yeah, she's sleeping. And I waited out and eventually it goes away, right? Last night it didn't go away. <laughs> it started to get so loud. So today I came prepared. Earplugs. Usually I'm the one snoring. Frank? Frank, what'd you have for supper? What'd you have? He'll tell you once he's on mom's side. Chevy. Oh, <gasps> oh boy. Frank, are you gonna tell me? What did you have? What'd you have for supper? Good old fashioned American food? Down home. What was it? Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> was it good? Did you have chicken for supper? Shredded chicken breast? Oh, I bet they just gobbled it down. Oh, yeah. Was it good, Chevy? Is everyone mad at me? Wiener? Well, you're always mad at me. He's, he's mad at the world right now. He hasn't been acting the same in the last couple of weeks. He's he, kind of bitter. He has been a little bit, a little bit off, eh? A little less clingy with me, have you noticed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's going on, Wiener? He may as well just gives us up. It's a losing fight. I'll always be number two now. Yeah. 
No more room on mom's lap. Not for both of them anyways. Once the belly's gone, I'll be able to have them both on my lap when the baby's not on my lap. You guys take turns, you know this. Don't wear it. Hey Chevy. Chevy's going to daycare <gasps> Daycare? Chevy. Oh. Cool. You gonna go make more friends? You excited? So in a small house, you make do with the space you got. That's my little workstation there. But work's all done for today, and it's time to sit down. The wife, the baby, the dogs who are definitely not trying to suck up to get some chips. <laughs> they would never do that. Especially not Diesel. Never. Right, Diesel? <laughs> and watch some Mr. Ballin. Have you guys heard of this guy on YouTube? I'm going to give him a plug here, even though it probably won't make a difference because he's a way bigger channel than me. Just Mr. Ballin. If you guys like the strange, dark, and mysterious, is that his line, right? Yeah. Stories, the strange, dark, and mysterious, like in story format, Mr. Ballin. We are addicted. B-A-L-L-E-N. What was that? B-A-L-L-E-N. B-A-L-L-E-N. Mr. Ballin. You'll find him. He's a big channel and a great storyteller. But I do warn you. Some of his stories really freaked me out. Yes, his stories are... He, he has some disclaimers on some of them. They're stories for adults. They're they're not like those kind of stories. They're just really scary. Disturbing. Some disturbing stories. And they're true stories. So beware. But you're going to love it. It's very addicting. Brit's watched every single video he has already, and there's lots. I grew up watching horror movies, and I listen, most of you don't know this, I listen to metal and like all that dark stuff. I loved it. Nothing ever phased me. And then I started watching this guy when I was home alone in the last couple weeks before Josh was off the road. And I started freaking myself out so bad that I would run to the bathroom to go the bathroom in the middle of the night and run back to bed as fast as I could. And like, I didn't like going outside. I had to have Diesel by my side. It just, ah, ah. Some of his stories are pretty creepy. I have a thick skin when it comes to this kind of stuff, but some of his stories, nope. Nope, nope. Great storyteller though.